Do you struggle with even the simplest of tasks? Sometimes things just aren't the right side up. They're inside out and the wrong way around. And cleaning up your mess only makes it worse. If you identify with any of these, then I've got the solution for you. I've got some handy science household hacks that'll make sure you're never left looking silly again. Ew. We all know it's important to wash our hands, and usually it keeps your hands smelling fresh and clean. But what happens if you've got something really gross in them? You just can't get the smell off. It's so gross, like, if you've got rotten egg all over them. Ew. Gross. Here's an excellent and simple life hack to help keep your hands squeaky clean. If your hands still smell, use a teaspoon of bicarb soda with your hand wash. This will get rid of any bad smells. So how does this work? Bicarb soda is able to react with acids. Most bad smelling substances are acidic, but bicarb soda is able to neutralise them. Rinse the bicarb and hand wash thoroughly. Hey presto! Smell gone. A journal would look like um, a green blobby thing. I think germs look like worms in mud all mushed together. I think germs look like flying green bumps. Like, it's clear, it's see-through, so you can't really see it. I think germs look spiky. But they're really disgusting. Um, I think germs look like little tiny specks of brown stuff. Spiky. <laughs> <laughs> Squishy and mushy. <laughs> I think germs look like boogers. Squishy, green, sloppy things. I think a germ looks like bacteria, and bacteria look so gooey, but you can only really see them with microscopes. Little specks of dots. I think a germ looks like a green sloppy thing. Little worms and mud all mushed together. <laughs> Is it getting hot in here, or is it just me? Josh is going to show you how to make a thermometer to find out. To make our thermometer, we'll need a glass jar with water in it, a thin straw, some food colouring, some modelling clay, a glass bowl, and some boiling water and some icy water that we can measure the temperature of. So once you've filled your glass jar, we want to take some food colouring and colour it green. Next, we'll take some modelling clay. Just trying to warm up the modelling clay so that we can make a nice airtight seal over the top of the jar with the clay. Next, we'll take our straw and we'll put it through our modelling clay, making sure there's no modelling clay sticking to the bottom of the straw. There's a good seal around the straw and we're going to place it in the middle, using the modelling clay to hold the straw in place. Our aim is to make a seal tight enough so that you can see the water moving up through the straw. Now that we've got a nice airtight seal, you can see some of the water has moved up into the straw. So we're going to take a pen and mark the point that it reached. Now it's time to test our thermometer in different temperatures. So first, we're going to test our thermometer in cold water. Take your cold water and pour it into the bowl. And next, we take our thermometer and we place it in the bowl of cold water. 
So as you can see, the water line has now dropped below where we marked the water before. Next up, we're gonna try the same with some boiling hot water. Be really careful with boiling hot water as you pour it into the bowl. And as we place our thermometer into it, we should see the water climb up inside the straw. If you look carefully, you can see that the water has moved up the straw above the line that we made before. So as the water heats, it expands and becomes less dense and rises to the surface. And as it cools, it contracts and becomes more dense and sinks to the bottom. This is called convection. We're not actually measuring how hot it's getting, we're just seeing how the temperature's actually changing. You can even take yours outside, but it might take a little bit longer. I'm gonna take mine outside now. Mmm, it looks delicious. Today is my birthday party and you're all invited. I've got cake, I've got balloons, I've got lots of party goers, and, and, achoo! I think I need a tissue. While I don't feel that bad at the moment, I don't realise that I've been infected and I'm also contagious. Now, contagious means that I can easily pass my infection on to other people. Hi, Hi Serena, happy birthday. Thanks, guys, come on in. <laughs> Germs are really hard to see. They're almost invisible. You can't even see them with just your eye. So for the sake of our story, we're going to pretend that this glitter here is my germs and infection. Now, the glitter germ, aka the flu virus, can be spread very easily through things like a... a... achoo! 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 Ugh. Like a sneeze, and before you know it, it's everywhere. Happy birthday, Serena. Thank you. great time going around the party with all of my friends. None of them realise that they're being infected and they're going to get sick because it takes a while for their symptoms to start to appear. All right, guys, who wants cake? Me! Coming, guys. So clean skin on our bodies works as a really great barrier to prevent the virus from getting in. Snot actually also works as a really good defence because when the germs get all up and trapped in your nose, when you blow your nose, you blow all the germs out. And tears is another one because it stops things from getting into your eyes. Thank Thanks for the birthday, birthday, Serena. Thanks for coming, guys. Would you like a... a achoo! Would you like a lolly bag? No, no thanks. Yeah, good call. Different kinds of germs cause different types of illnesses and there are literally thousands of different kinds. Some of them are more contagious than others. You've probably had a virus just like mine and it might make you cough, sneeze, get a temperature or even vomit. But a lot of these viruses can be avoided by simply washing your hands. get clever, I had a big birthday party with all my friends. But when they left, instead of leaving with a lolly bag, they left with a virus, passed on by me. Whoops! Now a virus is teeny tiny, and what it does is it makes you sick when it invades healthy cells. And I passed it on without even knowing it. So now two days later, all my friends are not feeling so well. They're <laughs> coughing, sneezing, they have a high temperature. Now let's take a look at what happens inside their bodies when the virus invades. All my viruses, I need you here, right now. Right 
Now for my skin, okay guys, we're going to be pears, alright? So you're just going to put your heads through here. One, two, and look at that, there's some skin right there. Our complex immune systems have three lines of defence. The skin, white blood cells. Okay, white blood cells come in. Yeah! Oh, I'll hand out, one at a time, in a line, in a line. Yay! And a third system I've called Special Ops. Okay, now my Special Ops team. Ascend, come on, go, 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 one. Nathan and Faye are helping them get dressed and ready for battle. So proud of those ones. So the virus comes up against the body's first line of defence. Now this is the skin, tears and snot, because all these things help keep the virus out. Alright guys, all of you in the pink ponchos, you're the skin, so let's form a barrier. Can everyone spread out for me? All right, everyone in the green shirt, you guys are the virus, okay? It's your job to try and get into the body. So the skin's pretty tough. How do you think you're going to try and get through? Maybe through a cut okay. or through <laughs> the opening or the nose, the mouth or the ears. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right, let's get ready to invade the cells. All right, viruses, let's go try and get through the skin. Guys, I found a way through. It's through the mouth. No! <laughs> Everybody freeze. <laughs> okay, so now the virus has gotten inside the body. So everybody in a white towel, you're our white blood cells. Now the white blood cells are like the warriors of the body and they actually fight all the bad guys off aka our virus. Okay, white blood cells, what you're gonna do is you're gonna try and eat up all of the viruses, okay? Are we ready? Unfreeze. <laughs> and the battle continues. But viruses can be very sneaky, and what they can do is they can disguise themselves as other cells. So they can take control of the cells or disguise themselves so that they are not discovered. But sometimes the white blood cells aren't able to eat all the virus, so they have to call for backup. We're being overrun, we need backup. Ah! <laughs> Everybody freeze. Okay, so now everyone in a black shirt, you're going to be our special ops, just like our one right here. <laughs> no. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to back away because I'm quite scared. All right, everyone unfreeze. Yeah. These are the cells in your body that may have seen the virus before, which means they might have some special specific knowledge about the virus and how to get rid of it. Even if they haven't seen it before, they are still the most specific and effective way of getting rid of the virus from your body. And there we have it, the battle that goes on inside our bodies when we're not feeling well. So when you get sick, it's because the viruses can get inside through the barriers, infect healthy cells and multiply inside your body. Luckily though, this time the good guys won. Well done everybody. So what do you guys think you can do to when your body is sick to try and help it fight off the virus? Rest and drink lots of water. Maybe go to the doctors? Have a really big sleep. I think you should eat ice cream. Ice cream? I'm not sure about that one. I'll have to do some research and I'll get back to you. Hi, I'm Serena and the field that I work in is biomedical. Hi, molecular. No, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, <it's okay>. uh, <laughs> so one of my favorite science facts is the fact that when you look at a color, it's not actually the color that you see. So I'm wearing a green shirt. It's actually every color except green because the green's what gets reflected back into your eyes. So I think it's really cool. All the colors are just a lie. <laughs> So I'm a PhD student and I'm studying biomedical sciences. So a PhD student is someone who's gone to high school and they've gone to university and decided, yeah, we want to go back and do some more studying. And then I get to be called a doctor at the end of it, which is nice. And my PhD, what I'm studying is identifying blood typing reagents. 
So there are lots of different blood groups besides the AVO, which you might know about already. So I'm trying to find a way to better identify these different blood types. I work in a lab. Uh, there are a lot of microscopes. Everyone definitely, definitely must wear a lab coat at all times. There's a lot of different samples that come and go, lots of tests, very big, very expensive machinery as well. You have to be very careful with those because they cost more than a house. <laughs> so the weirdest thing that I do is that I get to deal with a whole bunch of different blood samples. I've also had a chance to sequence my own DNA and see the bacteria from the inside of my mouth as well. So I first became interested in science when I was in year five. So one of my year five teachers was actually really big on science. She started an extracurricular science club. It was really, really fun. We learned lots of really cool things and I guess I've just gone with it from there. I was also very, very lucky that I happened to get a summer scholarship as well out with the Australian Red Cross. So I got to go and see their labs during the summer holidays. So I learned lots of things from there as well. The worst thing is when the experiments go wrong. So a lot of the time, you're going to do this huge experiment and then at the very end, it all stuffs up or you get no reactions. So some of the best parts of working in my field is simply you are at the breaking edge of anything new. So where I'm currently studying for my PhD, I know in my building, there are all these things that have never been seen before. And it's really cool because it's completely new and they're all gonna save the world one day and I get to be a part of it, so that's definitely my favorite part about science. <laughs> my name is Lisa Humphrey. I am a pediatrician and I work with Médecins Sans Frontières, or Doctors Without Borders. The field of science that I work in is medicine. I'm a doctor, specifically I'm a pediatrician, which means I'm a doctor for children. And in my job here with Doctors Without Borders, I see children in Africa, in Asia, all over the world, um, as well as seeing them back in the United States. The training that I had to do to be a pediatrician is quite long. Um, it's a bit different in the US where I did my training than here in Australia. But me personally, I had to do my secondary school, then four years of university, then four years of medical school, um, then three years of residency specialty training in pediatrics. And then after that, it was another few years of clinical practice in the field to get better at being a doctor after the training. So overall, it was quite a few years. Once you become a doctor, there's never a point where you are just done with your training and you're ready to do anything. You're constantly learning, you have to constantly be reading and trying to teach yourself new things, learn from your colleagues. And so that process has continued from the moment I finished my training and will continue up until I quit being a doctor, I think. In the other countries where I've worked, um, which is mainly in Africa, I see patients, so I see kids who are sick, who are coming to a health center for help, for diagnosis, and then I do a lot of teaching as well. Um, so it's a combination of clinical work as well as helping kids and their parents or anyone taking care of them um, learn about what's wrong with them if, if they have a problem. Doctors Without Borders is what we would call a humanitarian organization, which means we provide medical care and help to populations or groups of people that are in trouble. So maybe there is a war in the area, or maybe there is an epidemic, or maybe a group of people doesn't have access to health care like we would have here in Australia. When I work in other countries, there's a lot of challenges that come up. We do work in low resource settings, meaning there's not a lot of health centers or medicines or supplies sometimes to help us do what we do. And so we have to find ways to provide really good medical care without sometimes electricity, sometimes running water, and sometimes without those supplies, medicines, and, and health centers that we would have elsewhere. The most difficult part about my work as a pediatrician, I would say, is having to see kids that are sick. Um, it's never very fun to be around people that are sick, but the best part of the job is when kids get better. Um, I would say there's nothing better than when you have a kid coming to you for help. They're clearly sick. 
And you can think about what the solution is, what medicine they need, what education they need, um, what therapies or help they need after they've been sick. And then you see them slowly get back to their baseline. They want to play again. They want to go home and be with their brothers and sisters. That's by far the best part of being a pediatrician. Thank you.